Good morning, this is Dr. McDaniel. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist in New York City, Midtown Manhattan, and I'm bringing to you all things health related for women. Thank you for joining me at GYN Corner here in, what is this, this is the Facebook live stream. And uh, please check out the YouTube channel. It's also called GYN Corner and we're on eight different podcast platforms. Um, I think the most uh, well-known are the Google Podcast, the Apple iTunes, Anchor, and the Spotify. So if you have a commute, just put me on the podcast and hopefully um, I'll be bringing information that you're interested in and find valuable. So yesterday I spoke about um, ACV, apple cider vinegar, and the vagina. I had a viewer question yesterday about uh, when I mentioned that you can soak the tampon in apple cider vinegar and then place it overnight. And she said, well, the tampon expand, you're obviously not going to be able to place it in the vagina. So I'm... I answered her, but I just wanted to state it on the presentation also. So you're supposed to keep the tampon in the plastic app. You don't want to use a cardboard applicator. You want to keep it in the plastic applicator. And then you can use either full strength apple cider vinegar. Uh, if you've been doing it for a while, you're used to it. Or you can dilute the vinegar uh, by 50, 40 to 60 percent with sterile water and then you keep it in the plastic applicator. You just um, dunk it once or twice in the apple cider vinegar, and then with the plastic applicator, it doesn't expand, you place it in the vagina, leave it overnight, take it out in the morning. So I hope that's helpful for anyone else that may have had that question. Now today, I'll be speaking about tea tree oil and the vagina. So I get a lot of patients who ask me about the use of tea tree oil, if it's beneficial uh, for infections or just in general. So um, now tea tree oil is different from actual drinking tea. So um, the tea leaves that are used for drinking tea, for black teas or green teas, those aren't the leaves that are used for tea tree oil. Um, the tea tree oil tree is predominantly in um, Australia and uh, that region and it's the um, the Melaleuca alternifolia so the Melaleuca alternifolia is the tree in that area where the leaves are removed and then they're crushed to get the oil from those leaves and the oil from those leaves can be used either 100% so they call it neat or you can dilute it you can dilute it with either most people will use coconut oil um, liquid coconut oil or almond oil. If you have a nut allergy, then you can also use either olive oil or um, avocado oil. So those are the most common. They call those carriers because tea tree oil is an essential oil. Now, before anyone ever uses tea tree oil, they'll want to do a patch test because every once in a while someone is allergic to a different Oil, to essential oils. So a patch test means you take a little dab of the tea tree oil on a cotton swab, rub about a dime size um, swath area on your arm, leave it on for 24 hours. If you can, you can just cover it up when you take a shower. And then you see if you have a response, either an irritated response, itchy, burning, red, or obviously a rash or bumps. If you don't have a response, then the tea tree oil should be fine to use. Now, um, most women will use the tea tree oil for vaginal infections. Um, so I'll just lift, list off some of the things you can use tea tree oil for, why they may be helpful, and then um, how you would use them. So some women will use tea tree oil for vaginal infection, either yeast, fungal, or bacterial. So an inner vaginal infection or an external vaginal infection itch, um, like a jock itch or an ath um, athlete groin type of itch. You can also use tea tree oil for um, bad odor, so either underarm odor or vaginal odor, kind of crotch odor, strong, sweaty, body, musty odor. You can use tea tree oil for that. You can use tea tree oil um, if you work out regularly and you notice that you have a little bit of irritation or um, discomfort. You can use the tea tree oil immediately after workout even if you don't have a rash or you don't have a flaky patchy skin. 
Now, most women, if they use the tea tree oil, uh, they'll use it for vaginal infections. So the reason why it's thought that tea tree oil will be helpful uh, against vaginal infections is because there's an essential element in the tea tree oil. It's called turpin for all. That's for O-L. Uh, so turpin looks based on the research and the studies, it looks like it has very strong both antimicrobial and antifungal elements. So they've used it and they've seen that it inhibits or it kills a lot of the skin bacteria, so strep, uh, uh, staph, and some of the intestinal bacteria, just like uh, apple cider vinegar, um, Anthrococcus. So they've used it in studies and it's inhibitory or it can actually kill a lot of bacterial strains that are common um, pathogens or problems in the vaginal vault. It also looks like it has very strong antifungal and anti yeast elements for the same reasons. They've used it in animal studies. So we call that in vivo, and they've used it in petri dish or microbiology studies. We call that in vitro. Now the main yeast, just like apple cider vinegar, that um, tea tree oil looks like it is um, helpful to fight, is um, Candida albicans. Now Candida albicans is responsible for 96, actually 94 to 96 percent of yeast infections. There are other yeast strains that. Um, can also cause issues, and that's predominantly Candida glabrata, Torulepsis, and Parapsilosis. Candida albicans, though, is responsible for the overwhelming majority of yeast infections that women will uh, endure. Now, there are a small number of studies that have shown that some women are resistant to the usual treatments for Candida albicans. It's not common. It's less than 5% of women will be resistant to the usual treatments, even though the cultures or um, the, the offending agent is the Candida albicans. And it looks like the tea tree oil may be helpful in treating those resistant yeast infections or Candida albicans infections that no longer respond to the over-the-counter preps like um, monostat or gynolotrimin or gynazole, nor the prescription, which is the diflucan or fluconazole. So it looks like it's very helpful in treating resistant yeast infections or in augmenting um, the prescription treatments for the yeast infection. Uh, now, if someone wants to use the tea tree oil as a treatment for a vaginal infection, be it yeast, fungal, bacterial, doesn't matter, they can treat uh, in one of two ways. One would be to make a suppository. A lot of people call them um, inserts. Uh, they're really called ovules or suppositories, but a lot of the patients call them like inserts or um, balls, but they're basically... Um, they're little cream firm balls or they look a little like bullets uh, so you can make those yourself and I always recommend that people make them themselves because you know exactly what you're putting in and you know it's a hundred percent it doesn't have a lot of um, preservatives or chemicals in it so to do it yourself it's very easy you get essential tree um, tea tree oil essential oil 100% pure you can buy it in any of the health food stores they all carry tea tree oil and then you dilute it with the carrier oil. Um, predominantly, coconut oil is gonna be the one you use because it starts as a liquid, and then if you freeze it, it can become a solid. If you're allergic to nuts, then the suppository option's not gonna be a good option. The only other potential um, carrier oil you could use, it's not ideal, but the only other potential one would be um, a pure like a lard a fat animal you could get a lard you can melt that they sell lard at all the grocery stores um, you can get the lard and then that's a liquid and when you freeze it it's also a solid and it's not a health issue if you have a nut allergy so you take about uh, two to three drops of um, tea tree oil and then you mix that with about uh, uh, I guess about 
five to seven tablespoons of coconut oil. Mix it very well. Now some people will, or I guess I should say women, because it's only women who are gonna be doing this. Some women will have a little bit of irritation even from that well diluted tea tree oil. You can also mix a little bit of lavender oil, one to two drops of lavender oil. That's a highly soothing oil. So you could mix that with the lavender oil. Again, since it is an essential oil, you'll want to test the lavender oil on your arm for 24 hours to make sure that you don't have an unusual response to lavender. But you can do the tea tree oil by itself and or add it with the lavender oil, mix it with liquid coconut oil, and then you can just make a little mold. You can either buy a plastic mold, you can get those off the internet or at the uh, Michaels, any of the kind of DIY shops or at a health food store, they have little ovule molds. You can also make it yourself with aluminum foil or tin foil and then um, just make a little bullet shaped or even you can make them um, like a large, even like a small sausage shape and then put that in the freezer and then you can just chop it up into small little um, bullet size suppositories when you want to use one. Now for that suppository, you you will want to place it overnight. So before you go to bed, push it in the vagina as far as your finger will go. You can also buy applicators at the drugstores and then place it in the applicator and then just place that in the vagina like a tampon before you go to bed. And you'll want to do it for several nights in a row though. You'll want to do it for at least five nights, ideally seven nights in a row. Now some women will find that they don't get a complete relief from doing that five to seven nights. In that case, you can do it twice a day. So in the morning, after you've done your um, uh, daily ablutions, uh, place a suppository before you leave for the day, if you're working or out and about, and then place a second one before you go to bed. Now, needless to say, you may need to use a panty shield or liner if you're placing it in the morning because some of that oil may leak out during the day. Not a lot, but some of it will. So that's the most helpful or beneficial option for doing the tea tree oil as a vaginal suppository. You can also use it on the tampon just like the apple cider vinegar. You can leave it in the plastic applicator, soak it in that same dilute tea tree oil, the liquid coconut, avocado, olive oil, um, almond oil, or if you're allergic to nuts, uh, you can also, you know, the avocado and the olive oil will be fine or the lard will be fine. And then soak the tampon, same as with the ACV. Place that either before you go to bed or twice a day in the morning and before you go to bed for five to seven nights. I'm going to end the presentation here with the treatments for the vaginal infections, vaginities, and I'll come back tomorrow with additional treatments or uses of tea tree oil with the vagina. So I hope that's been helpful information. This is Dr. McDaniel, uh, GYN Corner. Please check out the YouTube channel. Please subscribe and follow here on Facebook and the YouTube channel and check out the podcast. Please leave comments and um, suggestions for any topics you'd like for me to address. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Bye.